Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are San Diego. On a beautiful night in San Diego, it's baseball night here with the Padres. Washington and San Diego ready for game three of their series. Well, they split the first two, and the Padres are going to see one of the best in baseball, the Nationals all-star right-hander, Max Scherzer. He goes to the mound in the last three years. He's 42 and 11. We're ready to go. A sellout crowd expected at Petco Park. As the Washington Nationals, a 10-0 winner last night, go against the Padres, who won the opener of this series by a score of 8-3. to three. And good Saturday evening to all of you with Mark Swinney, Mark Grant taking the weekend off. We are pleased that you've joined us. Uh, so far, two lopsided games, and we're expecting a pitcher's battle tonight. What a matchup tonight, and Max Scherzer, as advertised, is a bona fide ace. I think Andrew Kastner wants to get there, but this is a huge matchup tonight. Kastner pitches well here at home. We've documented that already. He is a 2 and 0. Oh. Uh, on this season and he's going to bring his variety of pitches and he has a great variety of pitches and if you look at at Andrew Kastner and his arsenal it starts with the two seamer the two seam fastball has a lot of movement and velocity that is very key but the changeup came into play his last few starts and that's when he starts racking up the strikeouts adding to that is the slider which is on that glove side but what he can do, Dick, is he can reach back on a four-seamer and add velocity. That's what makes him very dangerous. Let me clarify. He's 2-0 and against Washington here at Petco in a 1-8-4 ERA. So the Padres want the big Texas right-hander to come up with his best stuff tonight. Well, how much is expected of, of Kastner? Not only by the fans, by his teammates, but, but Black as well. And Chris Button has that part of the story when we come back.
Welcome back to San Diego. Game three of this four-game series, Padres and the Nationals tonight. What a great pitching matchup between Andrew Kashner and Max Scherzer. It's kind of a title card that you would expect to see late in October. Talk to Buddy Black about what Kashner needs to do out on the mound tonight. Cash, I think, is you know solidifying himself uh, as a guy. That, that teams recognize as one of the better pitchers in our league, even though uh, the one loss might not speak to that presently, but some of the internal numbers do. And, and when you watch him pitch, and uh, you can see where you know people view him as that. I mean, we feel very good when he takes the mound. So the numbers don't say it all. He hasn't picked up a win at Petco this season, but he's been outstanding in this ballpark trying to pick up win number one at home today. Game three of this four-game series. What a pitching matchup. Max Scherzer, Andrew Kashner. We've got first pitch coming up in San Diego. And game three of the four game series the Nationals started slowly this year seven and thirteen in April but thirteen and four cents and they've moved to within one half game of the National League East leaders the New York Mets the Padres now five games back of the Los Angeles Dodgers looking for a win to maintain their record above 500 here's the Nationals lineup tonight brought to you by Hyundai. Much like the one we've seen, a little juggling as Ian Desmond moves up to the second spot behind an art span. Yunel Escobar drops down to third. Bryce Harper, the sensational 22 year old outfielder, had a home run last night, leading most of the categories in the National League. Ryan Zimmerman at first base. Wilson Ramos behind the plate. 17 game hitting streak, the longest in the majors currently. Danny Espinosa, the switch hitting second baseman. Then Michael Taylor gets a start today, the left fielder, young left fielder. Rookie hit a grand slam home run on this trip in Arizona to win a big game for the Nationals. Max Scherzer on the mound. Introduce the umpires and uh, the crew chief is behind the plate tonight. Jerry Davis with Phil Cussey, Tony Randazzo, and Pat Hoberg 
on the bases. Holberg uh, did an outstanding job last night. A very yeah. consistent call. And that's what they're looking for exactly behind the plate and getting that as we take a look at Will Myers and the hitting coach Mark Kotze. And the Padres in their blue tops take the field. Rain on Thursday night. Cool last night. Ideal on this Saturday night. And it's a uh, Padres defense tonight brought to you by your San Diego County Ford dealers behind Andrew Kastner the outfield of Upton and Kemp at the corners and Will Venable will be in center field there they are around the horn it's Middlebrooks Amarista Spangenberg and Solarte with young Austin Hedges behind the plate Hedges like uh, Bryce Harper, a youngster at age 22. A couple of starts, and the pitchers have enjoyed his fine work, and that was, of course, his reputation out of San Juan Capistrano as a high schooler and a second round pick of the Padres as they took him away from UCLA and regarded uh, not only as a top prospect for the Padres, but one of the best catching prospects in all of baseball. Well, let's take a look at the scouting report for the 28 year old Texan. Andrew Kastner pitching backwards, which means early breaking balls and change ups for strikes because this is a fastball hitting team for the Washington Nationals. Also, movement over velocity. I think that's been the biggest change for Andrew Kastner that two seam movement rather than reaching back and asking if he could throw it so hard that he loses that movement. Now, he was throwing 98, 99, would even tip out at 100. And those uh, fastballs flattening out, rather, you get more movement. Hey, Darren Bolsley back from a terrific couple of days back home. And Knoxville Tennessee to salute the graduation of his daughter Allison from high school and now back there is the right hand man of Bud Black. The Knights fan strolls to the plate. In the last five games he's had two hits in each of those five. Last night with a couple of singles scored a run and drove in another for Matt Williams in his second season at the helm of the Washington Nationals. Lots of anticipation in this one. Sit back and enjoy it with us. As Kastner gets his sign and we are underway at Petco. A fastball for a strike. There's the 94, not the 98. Yeah, and exactly right. When you back off velocity, you gain control. And I think that's very important for Andrew Kastner tonight. Span takes strike two. A little more on the velocity. 95 that starts off the plate inside and runs over on the inside corner. Very nice pitch. And with two strikes on Span, that allows Middlebrooks a third to back up about five steps. They, the bunt is always in play with Span until two strikes. He comes back with a breaking ball. Slider. One and two. Span, Desmond, and Escobar in the first inning for Washington. They've won five consecutive series playing terrific baseball. The men from the nation's capital. Just missed at 96. A lot of run on that fastball. Just with that inside target. Swing and a miss, strike three. A slider gets Span to open the game. Well, when you're aggressive with your fastball, you can go to that secondary stuff, and his slider has been wiped out. See that late tilt coming at you, and the run with the fastball and the slider going the other direction, exposing the swing of Span. Shortstop Ian Desmond, who's Won three Silver Slugger awards at that shortstop position. A couple of home runs this year, and he flicks that one foul back of the plate. Hugh Nell Escobar would be next. Well, with no Jason Worth tonight because he got hit on the wrist, we're seeing a different lineup tonight for Matt Williams. Late swing on that 96 mile an hour heater. And Ian Desmond has taken some wild swings in this series, and why you put him in the second hole is possibly getting some more fastballs. We're going to be talking tonight about pedal for a cause, a 
supporting cancer research. Mm. 97 barely missed. And you can see the movement still is there on a 97 mile an hour fastball. Ripped to third and right under the glove of Middlebrooks into the left field corner and there goes Desmond on his way to second. Upton gets it in and the Nationals who were ripping the cover off the ball last night get a solid double from Ian Desmond. They had 16 hits last night on their way to a 10 nothing win. Fastball hitting club but you see the velocity on the slider. He rips this down the line. It's the reason why they call it the hot corner. It's coming in hot. Yeah, handcuffed Middlebrooks had little chance to react. That brings up Escobar. Who in the last 12 games hitting at a 400 pace raising his average up to 323. Scoring first in this game could play very large in the final outcome. And it may be Washington as he dribbles one through the right side charging the ball is Kemp and he hesitates now he throws and it's too late. No one backing up home plate so there goes Escobar to second base. Mm. Kemp hesitated looked as if he might have a play the ball just uh, dribbling its way out into shallow right field and Kemp charged and maybe had trouble getting the grip. Well, Dick, this is a mental mistake, and I don't think it's on Matt Kemp because he makes an accurate throw coming in. He doesn't get a handle of it, but when that happens, you have to cut the ball off. But also, the starting pitcher, Andrew Kashner, has to be in place behind that catcher, backing up the play. He is sitting right next to the left-hander batter's box. You have to be put in position, but if you're a first baseman for Salarte, you have to work and try to cut that ball off as fast as you can. They charge Kemp with a throwing error that allows Escobar to go to second base. And here's Bryce Harper. Harper, number one in the National League in runs scored, number one slugging percentage, number one in home runs with 13. He's number two in RBIs with 33, number one in walks. You need any more? Get out that book of superlatives for this kid. Out of play. And he hit his 13th. Last night, a high Ruthian shot to right field. Well, he's made some great adjustments by sitting back on his backside just a little bit more. He was a front foot hitter before, now sitting back, but also looking to go the other way and reacting in. It's been a benefit to him. Two strikes on Harper. He does strike out a lot. If you're going to find any weakness in his game, he uh, struck out uh, on the season 30. Nine times. That's the fourth most in the National League. On our pregame show, Clay Hensley talked about how important it was. And he knows that everyone's going to work him inside Bryce Harper. And you're seeing the Padres attack him inside as well. Levels the count at two and two. We mentioned scoring early could be a big factor tonight with two outstanding pitchers. And the record would bear that out. The Nationals, when they score first this year, are 11. And two Padres not bad either 14 and five. Fouled at the plate slider. Twenty two year old with a stick and a twenty two year old behind the mask. And Austin Hedges. Does he want this one low and away? Another foul. Well, even the foul ball is just jump off his back. Well, I like that 97 mile an hour fastball. And the good setup by Austin Hedges. He looks very calm behind there. Good target. Wide base. But he also is executing a game plan in a scouting report, which I think is the biggest adjustment for young catchers moving forward. Another foul. He's late on most of his swings on the fastball from Andrew Kastner. In the series, the two games, he's been on base seven out of ten at bats, four walks, three hits, including the home run. Matt Williams has himself a good one for a long time. That one 
skips in slider. And a full count. When you talk about Matt Williams, the manager of the Washington Nationals last year, pulled Bryce Harper out of a game and benched him. I think those are some of the things, the expectations you have. You've got to remember, he's only 22 years old, still learning the game, but now you see the benefit of molding these young players. You have to do those things sometimes as managers. They're hard decisions because this is a talented player. Rip foul. It's not a bad thing to walk, walk Harper here. Your first base is open. And you got a right handed batter coming up next. Ryan Zimmerman, a double play candidate. But Kastner's pitching to Harper. Steven Strasburg to the left, Gio Gonzalez to the right. Talented pitching staff. And we'll see Steven Strasburg, the former Aztec, tomorrow against Ian Kennedy. Line drive, right field, base hit. Kemp gets it in a hurry, and that'll hold Escobar at third base as he hustles the ball in. And it's first and third, three consecutive hits for the Nationals, and they're picking up right where they left off last night. Well, when you have confidence of handling the ball in, even if you're fouling balls off, you have the ability to hit a mistake and if this is a breaking ball that's elevated much easier for hitters to make adjustments with the elevated breaking ball. Continue to stay hot. Bryce Harper. So first and third and that brings Darren Balsley to the mound to talk things over with Kashner. One run is home. Big issue here is to hold the Nationals right there at one. Well, I think your own hitters up. It's also important too, and probably not knowing what Darren Balsley's talking about, but he's only one pitch away of getting out of this inning. Get the ball on the ground. Hopefully, it's a double play ball, and then you can breathe and get into the game. Zimmerman, however, is in the midst of a nine-game hitting streak himself. He had a sacrifice fly. And a walk with the bases loaded for a couple of RBIs last night. Also singled and scored a run. Ninety-five, but outside. To the mound. Oh, it skips over Kastner, so only one play for Spangenberg, and another run scores. That ball stays low enough for the 6 5 right hander Kastner to get it. Then they have a play at the plate. But it kangaroos over the mound, and that's good for an RBI. You just like you said, just out the reach of Andrew Kastner, which would have been tough to turn the double play, but nice play by Corey Spangenberg coming in on the run. Well, that gets a run home plus it moves Harper into scoring position. Two nothing. Wilson Ramos another. National in a hitting streak 17 straight games. Force in the fastball to get ahead on the count. That sounded fast, didn't it? <laughs> well, it's a heavy fastball because you know the velocity is there, but it also has movement. Sometimes you got to trust that, not pick at the corners. But you want to get on top of that two seamer so you get that downward movement as well. Two balls, two strikes to the Nationals catcher. Has one home run and 18 runs batted in this year. A lot of foul balls here in the first inning as Kastner with some good pitches, but the Washington hitters spoiling them. And that will happen when you pitch up in the strike zone. At times, Andrew Kastner gets flat with the two, two seamer, gets more side to side run, and you'll get foul balls, which will drive up the pitch count. 25 pitches for Andrew Kastner. 
That's not good. First inning. It's worse last night. Despagne took 41 pitches to get out of the first. And the count is full. That looked like a pretty good pitch. Danny Espinosa is on deck. Two quick runs for the Nationals tonight. And it'll be another as that ball skips right over the second base bag. And here comes Harper to the plate to score. It's three to nothing. Back to second. He's safe. Ramos on the throw to the plate. And the uh, Washington Nationals, just as they did last night, four runs in the first, have tallied three already in the first inning tonight. Ramos can, extends his hitting streak to 18. Now missing with the slider on the previous pitch, and then this slider leaks out over the middle. You can see Austin Hedges' glove reaching over the middle of the plate. But what I don't like about this is Salarte, who's not a typical first baseman, has to be there for the cutoff. And you can see advancing is Ramos to second base with two outs. Just as Harper was able to advance on the throwing error by Kemp because it was off a line and wasn't cut off. And now a fly ball to shallow center. Venable squeezes the final out, but the damage done. The Nationals come out with three runs on four hits against Andrew Kashner. That brought to you by Toyota. Corey Spanchenberg at second base will lead it off with Will Venable and Matt Kemp hitting third. Justin Upton, the cleanup hitter, Jan Solardi in the fifth slot. Then Will Middlebrooks, Lexi Amarista, Austin Hedges hits eighth, and then Cashner. Well, the failure to cut off the throw from the outfield on the base hit by Wilson Ramos. Didn't uh, hurt the Padres, but the error did earlier on the throw by Kemp from right field. That set up the man at second base to score on Ramos, a single. So an extra run there in the first inning for the Nationals. Spangenberg, 274 average, a big night in the opener of this series, a couple of solo home runs. Max Scherzer, the 30 year old, considered one of the best. Another foul. He has the seventh best batting average against in the league this year. Hitters batting only 213 against Scherzer. He has the fourth best ERA in the National League, 1.99. So an ERA of less than two, and he's already got three runs with which to work. Change up, one and two. Well, fastball slider change up also has a curveball, but. Predominantly that fastball slider change guy. Saw a young winner two years ago. He's been an all star the last two years. With the Detroit Tigers. As a free agent signed a. 
very attractive seven year deal with Washington to pitch for the Nationals for the next seven seasons. Probably the prized free agent signing to go along with John Lester for the Chicago Cubs. Fouled over the head of catcher Ramos. Panchenberg spoiling some pitches. I think the tendency in, in trying for the Padre hitters to stay away from over swinging with velocity. And trying not to guess with Max Scherzer. That one two count is significant. We'll get into that. Slider two and two. Scherzer very strongly believes that the first three pitches, not the first pitch necessarily, but that third pitch is the most important pitch in the game. Because if you're one and one, that third pitch you want it to be a strike. And that ball in the dirt strikes out Spanchenberg. Ramos goes to first base for the official put out one away. And a look at the Nationals defense brought to you by Renovation Realty. Taylor and Harper at the corners of the outfield with Span in center. Great name for a center fielder, isn't it? Span. <laughs> Escobar and Desmond on the left side. Espinosa and Zimmerman at second and first with Ramos behind the plate. He's been busy Ramos even with an outstanding backup catcher for the Washington Nationals. Lobaton is <laughs> would be starting for most teams. Yeah, and he's a, one of the guys that pitchers love to throw to. Venable getting a start. And it's 2 and 0. Oh. Venable, the one Padre in the lineup that has had some success against Scherzer. He's 4 for 9. 2 and 1. By the way, the three earned runs scored by Washington in this first inning ends that long streak, major league record streak, of Andrew Kastner, who had gone 21 consecutive home starts, allowing two earned runs or less, but that's broken tonight in a hurry. You could see him uh, at the end of that inning going down in the dugout and slamming his glove. Well, emotions play high because you know the importance of this game. I think this is a good litmus test for the San Diego Padres. Everyone and a lot of experts were talking about the Washington Nationals not only winning the National League, but winning the World Series because of their pitching staff. Do you want to match your, your talent for talent? That's a good way to measure uh, just what you have, even though this is uh, the middle of May. We're not quite at the one quarter mark of the season. You know, I, I, I was thinking that. Right now at this time of the year it's like a jigsaw puzzle. I love doing jigsaw puzzles. Mm -hmm. What's the first thing you do you get all those square ones. So you want to get the border right get you the get edges. the border. Well, that's where we are in the baseball season. The border has been set now. How do you put the pieces together in the significant. Uh, months of this baseball season. So Scherzer comes out and shows his stuff strikes out Spangenberg strikes out Venable as we look at the keys to the game. Brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers. Well, win the starting duel, and it's Andrew Kastner against Max Scherzer, and they're going to lock horns. This is a prize setup, and also capitalize on your scoring chances for the Padres. Max Scherzer gets very tough with runners in scoring position, and you've got to maximize those opportunities. Just as Washington maximized in the top half of the inning. Here's Kemp, who has had no success against Scherzer head to head, 0 for 21. Tonight could be the night. Ground ball foul. And our national scouting report is brought to you by Verizon Wireless. Well, we've touched on Max Scherzer already, the University of Missouri grad. Ace in all facets, and he comes as advertised. He's a competitor, great example for the pitching staff, but he also doesn't pitch you the same way twice. He'll change ways of pitching you. He'll start you off with a breaking ball or go with that power fastball. There's that 1-1 one, one pitch, but he misses low, 2-1. The difference between a 2-1 count and a 1-2 count is so dramatic it, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Ground ball sharply, but right at Desmond, the shortstop. He fields and fires, and the 
Inning comes to an end. Scherzer takes care of the Padres. One, two, three. And Will Myers was clear to take some ground balls today during batting practice. He was out there, good news, without wearing the brace on that left wrist. He's dealing with left wrist tendonitis. Also suffered the same thing last year. Talking with Buddy yesterday, today, he said the real test is going to be when he starts taking batting practice. The follow through on the swing, that's where it hurts him the most. But hey, anytime he's able to get on the field, put a glove in, on that hand is a good news. You know, he's been such a valuable part, Chris, of that. Padre offense so much improved and they miss him at the top of the batting order. He set the table and he's second only to Bryce Harper and most runs scored even though he's missed now four games. Also taking ground balls with a smile on his face. He just loves the game. Fun to be around. Michael Taylor the rookie outfielder. Has delivered three home runs. Knocked in 13 as a backup outfielder. Good numbers. The other day in Arizona Bryce Harper got tossed in the seventh inning on a check swing. And the Washington Nationals have been hot come in. Michael Taylor ends up hitting a game winning grand slam in Arizona. Yeah ninth inning they were trailing six five and. A grand master from this young outfielder to win the game nine six. Right side base hit. Just out of the reach of Spangenberg. The fifth hit. For the Nationals. Oh, tough to get Washington out the last two nights. Well, again, fastball away, and you go the other way. That's just smart hitting. So that gets Scherzer out of the way. He's up there to sacrifice. Jabs at that foul. Three for 17 is a hitter. Scherzer coming over from the American League Tigers. Oh, just got out of the way of that one. Strike two. I'll change the thought process when you a starting pitcher throws a fastball in on the hands and you want to pitch in when they're in a sacrifice situation, but that's dangerous. He made contact and that saved him from being hit right in the chest. Yeah, he does a nice job of getting that right hand off the bat. Strike three call. Didn't have his heart in that last effort. And a second strikeout for Kashner. To the top of the order, Denard Span. He struck out his first time. We mentioned Detroit and the Tigers and Interesting news out of the Motor City yesterday and 
A lot of fans out here from Michigan and a lot of hockey fans. A bridge is going to be built from Detroit over to Windsor, Ontario. There's a tunnel there now. Two billion dollars plus. Wow. But the story is they're going to name it after the great Gordie Howe. It's going to be the Gordie Howe International Bridge. And, you know, the whole symbolism that Howe comes from Saskatchewan to become a great American yeah. hockey player, an American citizen, and now the bridge will be in his name. Hockey Town. The Howe International Bridge. He grew up watching him. Wow. How Lindsay and Abel, the production line for the Red Wings. Back Is that an oh my? And oh my. We were way up. Some standing room only at the Olympia, my dad and I, after standing in the snow to get a standing room ticket. <laughs> it's magical moments. Yeah. You never forget. Yeah. And he certainly was, uh, when they talk about the greats in any sport, you talk of National Hockey League, how Gretzky would be the first two to come to mind. Two and one. Taylor at first base. He'll steal your bag, Taylor. Well, not a bad time to run when you have a three and nothing lead. And try to force the issue. The Washington Nationals team doesn't run a lot, but this is a speed guy that's trying to learn how to steal bases. There he goes. Right on cue and the foul away. Be pretty interesting to see this matchup because Austin Hedges. Hasn't really had too many opportunities at gun runners out. That catch and release time is very impressive if you haven't seen it yet. Yeah, he works the baseball like a middle infielder. Twenty-four-year-old Taylor establishes his lead. Line drive, base hit, right through that right side again. Taylor will pull up at second as Kemp plays it in. Oh, six hits already and only four outs recorded by Kashner. Well, it just seems like every mistake, these national hitters, and this is a mistake over the middle of the plate, and Andrew Kashner will tell him that, but getting that foot down early for Denard Span. This line drive to right and keeping the line moving. Ian Desmond doubled under Middlebrook's glove in the first inning, scored one of the, the three national runs. Six for strike one. Now, Dick, uh, players' mindsets are so unbelievable because you'll start feeling that here we go again feeling, and you got to fight against that. Mm -hmm. So many times that you start slipping into it, especially in a baseball season where you have every single day you are out there trying to grind it out. They're going to throw to third base, and he's up. There's that quick throw from Austin Hedges. Now they may challenge this. The reaction of both the hitter and the runner indicating they thought that young Taylor was safe at third base. Williams has not called for the challenge yet, and Taylor hasn't left third base. Yeah, this is a strange This stuff. is too much time. I don't get it. Too much time. They should not allow this amount of time. Either going to challenge or you're not. And I, I would say that if it were Bud Black going through the same process. What do you want to do? Call home and get a, a friend to tell you what? No, well, if you want to call, I'll call. Well, maybe they're talking to each other. But you look at, <laughs> look at the catch and release from Austin Hedges right on the bag, and a great tag by Will Middlebrooks. I did think he was safe. Well, that right foot, and you blame the slide because he's sliding in. That right foot is elevated, then comes down on the bag. Now, there's got to be some time limit on, on a challenge. Either you do or you don't. And now we're back to where we were last year where the manager would stroll out as slowly as he could and turn the umpire around so he could look back in the dugout and wait for the the video coordinator to tell him whether to challenge or not. With the naked eye I thought he was safe. I can understand why they're challenging. Well, if we look at this this is a different angle that we see but I thought the last angle was pretty good. That looks like he got in there but you can't really see him apply the text. See the right foot up elevated. And you wonder if that gets down and if it's changing because if he's sliding into that first part of the bag, I think he's safe easily. I think he's safe. Even on that second close call there, 
by the time the tag was on that foreleg, his uh, spikes had hit the bag. So to add uh, 90 feet to the insult of the game so far. No, oh, they're going to stay with the out. Thank you very much. Oh. Well, Matt Williams loses his challenge the rest of the game. So credit Austin Hedges with a rifle shot to third to deny Taylor and the Nationals. You got to be impressed of the catch and throw, especially with the right handed hitter. Austin Hedges is earning his keep with his reputation coming to the big leagues. Round ball to third, charged by Amarista, and he gets Desmond. Nice play. Couple of singles, but no added runs for Washington. It's still 3 0. Padres Baseball brought to you by GMC Precision Matters by Petco what we feed them matters and by Sony the leader of 4K Ultra HD with Mark Sweeney sitting in for Mark Grant Chris Button Dick Amber thank you for joining us on this Saturday night baseball night in San Diego and it's Justin Upton leading off for the Padres in the bottom of the second against Max Scherzer retired the side in order struck out two did Scherzer in the first inning he came into the game with 55 strikeouts fourth most in the National League and he jumps in front of Upton 0 and 2 leading the Padres with eight home runs and 25 runs batted in. Another strikeout, his third. Well, Dick, you think about guessing, and your tendency is to guess with Max Scherzer because the type of stuff that he has starts him off with a slider and ends with that fastball elevated. He can reach back and add a little bit more velocity on that four seamer. Solarte. Two seamer look to be coming back over that inside corner. He is one in 500 that has two different colored eyes. Scherzer, it's called heterochromia or rhythm. It's a genetic anomaly, and he has one blue eye and one brown eye. Not that that <laughs> matters to his pitching arm, but. One in 500 uh, of the populace have that. Dan Aykroyd does. Christopher, uh, Christopher Walken and uh, Jane Seymour 
actress. They all have brown and blue eyes. What do you do when you identify yourself uh, at the Department of Motor Vehicles? And they say eye, eye color. <laughs> Both. <laughs> all. All. <laughs> D. All of the above. That's a prize arm that he has too, and secondary pitches to go along with it. Change up, and the count goes two and two. And that's a tendency with that change up. He has good arm speed, but he likes to spike that. And you give up on it thinking he can't make that adjustment, then he'll throw it back to back pitches. Solarte, a couple of hits last night, the only Padre with more than one. Rolls that out to second baseman Espinosa, and there's two away. So five up, five down for Scherzer. Here's Will Middlebrooks. Well, let's just check out how Scherzer works to Middlebrooks and see how he works that count if he can get it the that third pitch to one and two rather than two and one. There's the one. Strike on the swing. Hitters this year, it's just a phenomenal number. Hitters this year on 2 1 pitches around the league are hitting 331. Now well, he's ahead two strikes, so he's already at least at 1 and 2. Well, Dick, it's 158, Mark. 158 at 1 and 2. Well, it's a, it's a huge, a huge disparity of the numbers, and you see that. They, they bear interest, but that is very important because it, the one-one count is so important. Well, the way in that I was, I was actually told by the ex-catcher Gary Allenson in the minor leagues. He said, "What's the most important pitch?" And I said, "1-0 or the first pitch." First pitch. Those yeah. are the, those are typical answers. He said, "1-1 because the pitcher wants to show you that that pitch that looks like a strike and gets out of it. But if he goes 2-1, you're going to get a quality strike the next pitch." And in this case, Middlebrooks doesn't get even one ball. It's a three pitch, now a four pitch strikeout. Four of the six men faced by Scherzer have been punched out. Pedal the cause, a world without cancer. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Our family has suffered three losses in the last year to that terrible disease, cowardly disease. Well, there's a lot of fight going on against it, and Pedal the Cause is one of uh, the causes uh, that the Padres and Fox Sports San Diego are urgent, urgently uh, asking you to support. And we'll get more about just how we can do that. There's a uh, some of the folks that came in today and the first pitch is rattled out to right center field and the Nationals just don't stop hitting and on his way to second base is Escobar with his second hit of the game. 
And so the founder of uh, Pedal the Cause is with us, Bill Coleman. Bill, thank you to, for being aboard, and Henry Ford, the vice president of uh, Fox Sports San Diego and uh, general manager of this great uh, operation is here as well. And we'll start with you, Henry, and why Fox Sports San Diego uh, so engaged uh, with this cause. Well, you know, Dick, you know that you know, typically our core focus is uh, youth and education, youth in our community. Um, and, you know, cancer is one of those things that touches us so personally in our families, as you stated as well, and in our, our global communities for the most part. Um, you know, when we had the opportunity to support the research is being conducted in this, in this market, uh, in our community, in our own back, backyard here, which is some of the foremost research being conducted in the world uh, in this area, I, I couldn't understand why we wouldn't be a part of this. Austin Hedge is trying to pick Escobar off second base. Uh, Aaron Throw skips out into center field and over to third goes Escobar with no one out. And Bryce Harper, the batter, not a good situation for Kastner and the Padres. Here's their best hitter up with no one out and a man at third. Bill, you're the founder, and what gave you the idea of uh, using the cycle as part of the cause? Well, when, when you go around the country, you find that uh, cycling events are the most prolific at fundraising. And there's events around the country that uh, raise consistently for uh, cancer fundraising, uh, tend uh, up to $40 million a year by uh, community-based cycling events. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been involved in starting one in St. Louis, and uh, are really excited about joining the Padres here and uh, starting it uh, in San Diego. Well, give us an idea of just what someone listening right now said, I want to join the operation here and pedal for the cause of so what do they do? Well, there's many ways you can join. You can be a, a one or a two day rider. So you can ride a distance between uh, 10 miles and a two day ride of 150 miles. So there's courses of 10, 25 and 50 miles and a, a two day 75 mile each day ride. You can also be a virtual rider. So you can just raise money for the cause. And uh, like we said, some of the world class research period happens right here in San Diego. So these folks here today that are drawing a lot of interest uh, as uh, they're preparing themselves for a future ride or just uh, this is to get people interested in the, what you're trying to accomplish. And showing Henry what he's going to be doing soon. Well, I like the virtual uh, <laughs> riding part. <laughs> well, there's, a, there's no one that hasn't been touched by by cancer and anything we can do. And the money would go basically toward cancer research. Is that correct? Yes, it uh, supports four beneficiaries here. Four hospitals? Four beneficiaries are uh, UC San Diego Moore's Cancer Center, the Salk Institute, Sanford Burnham, and Rady's Children's Hospital. And I know manager Bud Black and his wife Nan are very involved in the uh, Rady Hospital, Children's Hospital. So Harper with a count full again seems like every time he's up there it's three and two and there's another walk to the man who has walked more than anyone in the National League so first and third no one out to Ryan Zimmerman trouble spot with the Padres already down three nothing here in the third now the Padres are they going to have a team of riders they sure are they're going to have a uh, last year they had a team of riders it was called uh, team 19 uh -huh. and, uh, for Tony for Tony and uh, they brought a pretty good entourage, and we're counting on them to double, triple, quadruple that this year. So I'm sure it'll be great. Ryan Zimmerman. He grounded out the first time, and that knocked in one of the runs for the Nationals in the in the first. So there's so many ways that the fans can contribute and if they don't want to get on a bicycle and ride uh, let's give you the information the website to join a team or learn more is uh, www.gopedal.org and if you use the code go Padres you can join the Padres team and start your own team in fact now, how would you do that well it's right on the website so if you uh, log on to the website you will be able to Vangenberg with a great stop and a double play. 4-6-3. That ball headed for center field and another national run. And Spangenberg spears it and turns it into a 4-6-3 double play. So two away and moving over to third is Escobar.
Just jump in there, Henry, and call those double plays now. <laughs> Use that bass voice. That was really exciting. <laughs> it really was. That's my favorite play. So Wilson Ramos is the hitter. He singled in and run his first time, extending his hitting streak to 18 straight games. And another chance for Spangenberg, the short hop, and he throws him out. Well, Bill Coleman and Henry Ford, thank you for spreading the news and the word. We can't wish you uh, anything but the greatest of, uh, of luck in raising lots of money. Let's get rid of this damn well, cancer. Huh? We'd like to help beat it right here. All right. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Henry. Fox Sports San Diego joining the Padres and supporting uh, the pedal the cause. Washington more runs it stays at three nothing it could have been a big inning for the Nationals had that ball gone through. And here it is again Spangenberg with no one out two men on that ball could have been a RBI single instead it's a double play and Kastner gets out of the inning. Yeah, that's a defensive gem and immediately Andrew Kastner pointed at Corey Spangenberg picking him up there and that was an absolute bullet as they start talking after that'll change things around. And Marista falls behind two strikes. One ball and two strikes with Hedges and then Kashner scheduled here in the bottom of the third. Foul tip, strike three. Five strikeouts of the seven outs so far recorded by Scherzer. As we check our T-Mobile game changer National League rankings this season. Max Scherzer in the top seven in all of those categories. ERA perhaps the most important and uh, the whip. That's walks and hits innings pitch less than one per inning. That's very impressive from the right hander. Austin Hedge is swinging at the first pitch. He's had only 10 at bats, a couple of hits for the 200 average. Up in San Francisco, it was a great television watching Charlie and Pam, his parents, see him as he lifts one to left field. Did he get it all? Not quite. A step from the wall and glove by Taylor. So two away and the cash through the pitcher comes up. And when Hedges uh, knocked in a run with his first major league hit. And uh, mom and dad were there to cheer him on. That was great stuff. That's a magical moment and one of those that those moments you feel like you belong after that. You question it. When you get called up you think you're going to be tapped on the shoulder and they're going to say hey I'm just kidding. Because <laughs> it does it goes in your mind and he has deserved the call up his prowess behind the plate but he's made some good adjustments offensively 
Pat Murphy talked about some of the adjustments he's made. Kashner has three hits and 15 at bats. And here's that third pitch, one and one the count. And so now the one and two, and uh, and that's a lot what tougher. That's the look right there. The slider that starts as a strike and gets out of the strike zone. That's what a pitcher wants to try to execute. Not that they're not going to throw a strike. That's a determining factor of how the rest of the bat plays out. Low on that delivery, two and two. To get one and two, there's so many options that strikeout pitchers can go to. He already has five punch outs. Brown ball right at the shortstop Desmond. And hustling is Kastner, but comes up a step shy. Three innings in the book. Perfect so far for Scherzer. Andres as we go top of the fourth. It'll be Espinosa Taylor and Scherzer the bottom three in the order for Matt Williams against Andrew Kashner. Terrific crowd again on Saturday night baseball night in San Diego. And we hope to see you out here tomorrow military Sunday we will be saluting the U.S. Coast Guard 1230 our TV time here on Fox Sports San Diego Ian Kennedy against former Aztec All-America Steven Strasburg. Espinosa fly to shallow center his first time. Like most of the hitters in this lineup, they're all in a good hitting streak. Padres caught Washington playing red hot. Clay Hensley, our colleague now, down by the Padre dugout, getting his views from courtside, so to speak. Clay, let's talk about the starting pitcher for the Padres. 57 pitches coming into this inning. That's a lot of pitches in the first three innings. Yeah, he's throwing a lot of pitches right now. What he's doing, I mean, he's giving up some foul ball tips that are, are, are building his pitch count quite a bit right now. He's not going, getting ahead in the, in the count for a lot of these guys. They're fouling off the pitches and they're getting some of these hits. You can see that he's got seven hits to the game right now, giving up three runs. A lot of pitches per AB. His pitch count's pretty high. It's going to be tough to stay in the game a long time unless he starts pitching a little bit of contact, getting ahead of hitters a lot earlier so he can start putting them away. The problem with the Nationals with contact, they're finding all the holes. Yeah. Two and one. And now three and one. Foul tip. At 95 on the fastball, full count. And you to Clay's point to just knowing that as a hitter, from the hitter's perspective, you're battling for hitters' count so you can sit dead red, especially a power fastball guy. 
But you want to get into those counts where you can start looking for zones and areas. If you're an offensive guy. Now to play another foul ball. But so many pitches. Are reason to see the hand, see the release point see it out of Andrew Castor's hand. And like we talked about last night seeing tendencies. From the starting pitcher. That wears you out those foul balls doesn't it Clay. Yeah you know it's tough I mean we're, this is a point case here. Three two count again you know he's thrown a lot of pitches he's getting behind in the guys and they're starting to foul the pitches off. Whenever you're a guy and you have a power arm like Kashner does getting ahead is key to it because then he can go back if he wants to to pitch him backwards with the fastball or go to his devastating off speed stuff. But right now he's getting into a lot of three two ball counts and that's what's killing him right now with that pitch count. And there's ball four lead off walk is never good. That's the. Second. Three pass from Kashner. Well, we have another timeless moment brought to you by Coors Banquet. Click, 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 timeless. Three players hit grand slams for the Calgary Cannons on this date in 1991, including Alonzo Powell, Padre hitting coach. Calgary beats. Who did they beat? Tacoma, Tacoma 22 to 7. The Tigers at Tacoma, that's right. Yeah, and they, they went for two. Did you see that? Yeah. No, that was a rouge. <laughs> Alonzo Powell, the you saw him hit, didn't you? Yeah, and I, I loved watching him hit. He had a really ni nice career, went overseas and played as well, but now sitting in the dugout and trying to teach the Padres certain styles with, along with Mark Kotze. Had a couple of years in the big leagues, one year with Montreal, another with Seattle. Two and one again. In his minor league career, Alonso hit 282 with 136 homers. And he had some thunder in that bat. Michael Taylor singled through the right side his first time. So again, a 2 1 pitch. Hitters uh, this year batting 331. 1 2 pitch, only 158. And it's 2 and 1 is the hitter's count, apparently. And a check swing foul. Uh, Michael Taylor is a young hitter that's learning in the game, but has speed to his game. So you'll see the middle infielders and the double play depth. They'll start edging in a little bit. That'll expose some holes in the infield and try to capitalize with that. As you can see, middle infielders moving a couple steps in. Sprayed foul. Another foul. Yeah, that's so frustrating because that's a good change up, and you see the hitters battling, fouling it off, and that's what happens when that things aren't going very well for you as a starting pitcher. But from the hitter's perspective, that's what you want to do. You want to give yourself another opportunity and foul off a pitcher's pitch. Count up to 71. Try three call 97. And the strikeout pitch from Kashner, his third strikeout of the game. Well, he backs up that changeup with a slide step fastball. You can see that modified leg kick, and then he paints the outside corner. And Austin Hedges sticks that fastball. Scherzer tried to find his first time, almost was hit by a pitch. Eventually struck out trying to bunt. Tried but missed. Well, again, Andrew Kashner starts to pitch in 
in bunning situations. It's very hard because you have to adjust your hands and pull the barrel inside. And the tendency is to pop those pitches up. That's the reason why pitchers will throw you inside. Yeah, There's a pretty good bunt, but Kastner has a play at second, and he throws it into center field, and almost by Venable. On to third goes Espinoza, and that ball could have rolled all the way to the 396 sign. That's a terrific stop by Venable on Kastner's error and throw. Second error by the Padres tonight. Well, you see the bunt laid down with two strikes, and it's a nice job, and it's a good play for Kashner to go to second base. But the errant throw and the nice play by Will Venable. You can see that body opens up, and the bad throw to second base advances to first and third for the Washington Nationals. So with one out, back to the top of the order. Denard span last night in the first three innings was up three times testimony to all the hitting and run scoring of the Nationals here he is up the third time in just the fourth inning tonight struck out and single left center field and up and into the gap to make the catch tagging and here comes Espinosa and the leadoff walk pays off for Washington credit span with the RBI his 12th of the year. So the air, along with the leadoff walk, air position. Espinosa at third, where he could score on the sacrifice fly. And here's Desmond. Double and the ground out to short. Two strikes now. Fastball at 94. These are the innings that hurt when the opposition gets a run without a base hit. Catches tonight's uh, members from Sports for Exceptional Athletes came to the game aboard our Fan Express, brought to you by Kaiser Permanente. Welcome, Welcome. to Petco. Welcome, guys. Nice crowd tonight. Great seats. Thumbs up. Why not? Kashner taking his time here as that foul tip may have. Taking a bite out of his catcher hedges, let him settle in. Pitcher Scherzer still at first base with two outs. A slider that Desmond started to go after, but laid off, and it's one and two. That's on the outside corner, strike three. A couple of called third strikes, four total now for Kashner.
My schools for baseball were telling me that I, I, I wasn't ready to play D1 baseball and then that I needed to go to junior college. So um, I, I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know if I was going to get drafted or I was going to have go to go to go to college. And, um, you know, a lot of the junior colleges wanted me, but none of the D1s did. Padre fans, Wednesday after Padres Live, meet the man behind number 27, his journey to the big leagues and the Padres as Fox Sports San Diego spots light the real Matt Kemp Wednesday after Padres Live on Fox Sports San Diego. And what Kemp didn't say was he was recruited by the University of Oklahoma in basketball and uh, in 2003 was drafted sixth round by the Dodgers. Pretty good sixth round pick. Well, the Padres, not only hungry for a run, they could use a base hit. They've gone now. 16 innings since they last scored and that was when this man at the plate hit his second home run on Thursday night. Spanchenberg. They've been shut out 16 straight innings since and outscored 16 nothing since. And Scherzer mowing them down nine straight five by strikeout. And here it is the one one pitch. Change up, and there he's sitting on one and two. Let's go down to Clay Hensley next to the dugout. Clay, what makes Max Scherzer so tough in your mind? Well, look, one of the things is right now, as you can see, the difference between both pitchers in this game. Scherzer here is getting ahead pretty much on every hitter, and you can see the total pitch count is almost almost half of what uh, what, what Casher has. Look, Casher's been getting behind in some of the guys, but look, when this guy right here gets ahead of you, when Scherzer's throwing strikes just like he's been doing all season long, that changeup is devastating. He's keeping hitters off balance right now, and it's causing the ground balls we just saw right there, striking people out, and he's limiting, he's limiting all the hits. He's, he's out there, and the biggest difference is just throwing strikes and getting ahead of guys, unlike Casher right now. And Clay, only one Padre able to get the ball out of the infield, and that was uh, young Austin Hedges hitting the ball to the warning track in left field. Will Venable struck out swinging the first time. Takes inside after showing bunt that brought Escobar in on a charge. And that's a good idea for Will Venable. You have to try to change things up. What he'll do is he'll change the defensive alignment for the Washington Nationals and try to create those lanes. A couple of pitches just off the inside edge, 2 0. Oh. And the first time tonight he's gone three and oh on a hitter. Well, Dick, you got to remember for Max Scherzer in his last four starts, he struck out 39 batters coming into tonight and only walking two. Amazing. And on four pitches, he walks Venable. Maybe that's the start the Padres made. First base runner of the night. Now Scherzer has to leave the windup to go to the stretch. See if that makes a difference. Matt Kemp, the hitter. Kemp hit it sharply, but right at shortstop Desmond the first time. Big hole right side. They can't use the shift here with a man at first. Scherzer, a native of St. Louis, went to high school in Cardinal Country and uh, matriculated at University of Missouri, finance major. That came in handy with his last contract. Well, I like this from Matt Kemp. Matt Scherzer is taking his time and trying to maintain that running game with Will Venable over at first base. You get uncomfortable sitting in the batter's box for too long. You have that internal clock that'll get you out of that batter's box and calling time. Go on yours. One and one. 
Well, here's that pitch, Dick. One and one. Very important count. Let's see how Max Scherzer handles Matt Kemp. Trying to throw that pitch. It looks like a strike and gets out of the strike zone. Look how he plays with the ball in his glove there. Oh, good cut by Kemp, but it's one and two. Went to the fastball, a little extra on the fastball, 95. Well, you see Max Scherzer, and he lifts the ball to that top part of his glove and then starts fingering all his different pitches. Talked about tendencies. Well, the good ones will try to change those things up. Greg Maddox did that. Because that's that confidence, but the intangibles that he brings to a mound. Yeah, that long hold and then the throw over. But what happens is some guys that don't do that will reach in and that glove will expand a little bit and showcase possibly that changeup, which he likes to go to that pitch. Line drive, first hit of the game for the Padres. Kemp to left center, Venable running all the way will make it to third. And the Padres threaten here in the fourth inning. One out walk to Venable and Kemp has the first Padre hit. Yeah, and you wonder if the threat of Will Venable at first base in the running game helped this. A nice hitting by Matt Kemp just shooting that gap. And again, Will Venable going first to third. Good base running. Padres with one out, runners at the corners, trying to chip away at that four nothing deficit. Upton struck out the first time swinging. Padre leader in RBIs with 25. It would be nice if he could get a hold of one here and make this a new ball game. Breaking ball out in front. Well, that's two times he's set him up with that first pitch slider. Then he tried to elevate with the fastball. Good speed aboard at the corners with Venable at third, Kemp at first. A slider. Well, in between innings, uh, the big scoreboard with some Lionel Richie. <laughs> And using Matt Kemp's face <laughs> in Richie's routine. They're doing some terrific stuff with that beautiful new scoreboard here. They are. That is awesome. And Matt Kemp <laughs> comes up and gets a knock. Yeah, there's Will Myers in there. You gotta love that. Maybe that was inspiration for that first hit of the game. 0 oh 2 now to Upton. Mm, slider almost came over that inside corner at the knees. Again, pitching him differently, not falling into a pattern. The last time started him off with a slider and elevated with a fastball for a strikeout. And then now, this last at bat, three straight sliders. Jan Solardi on deck. You saw Middlebrooks in the hole. Yeah, caught in an odd toss, and sometimes pitchers will go over that because they they grip a pitch that they really don't want to throw. As we see Max Scherzer go over there, quick feet, and then the slow toss, getting that elbow underneath. Maybe he didn't like the pitch that he wanted to throw. Very deliberate in the stretch and another time called by Upton. Well, I like this too. Talk about speed up rules and Jerry Davis has to grant that time. For Justin Upton, but it's waiting in the box for too long. Not hurrying in again. The catcher Ramos. In case you're wondering, the rule that is never enforced, the 12 second rule of pitcher having to deliver once a batter is ready, does not apply with men on base. Not that they're going to call it anyway. 
Scherzer are certainly testing the patience of Upton here in this first and third situation. Broadway fans, big crowd here tonight on Saturday. Hoping up and get a hold of one here. Get after that 4 0 Washington League. Foul tipped into the glove, strike three. Half a dozen strikeouts now for Scherzer. Now it's up to Solarte. Well, again, throwing that fastball on the same plane as the slider and the frustration from Justin Upton. He got a pitch, typically, he handles that pitch and just that power fastball and reaching back. Solarte grounded the second his first time. Had terrific success, success so far this year, hitting from that left handed side of the batter's box, hitting 333. Again, a soft toss over to first base. Well, this is what you want to do if you look working on the intangibles and changing your times, changing your your patterns, and controlling the running game. Not only does he have great stuff, but he changes his time to slide steps. He works on so many different things before he executes his pitches. Some feel he is about as cerebral a pitcher as there is in the game. That, uh, he's a, been a big fan of sabermetrics right from the start. Well, Mike Rizzo, the general manager of the Washington Nationals, had him and drafted him with the Arizona Diamondbacks. That's one of the reasons why he went out and got him in the free agent market. Change up is low 2 and 0. Oh. He was part of one of the most interesting three corner trades in baseball the last uh, 10 years or so. It involved Ian Kennedy and it involved Curtis Granderson going to the Yankees. And Detroit got this man and what a deal for the Tigers. Inside corner change up. Well you've seen a lot of back to back secondary pitches for Max Scherzer in this inning. That runners on the corners and he has gone to varying his type of pitches and his sequences. Action pitch two and one. And it's three and one a fastball. Should Solardi keep it alive. Middlebrook's on deck. Venable camp at the corners. All four and the bases are loaded. That brings the tying run to the plate here in the fourth inning. A solid at bat by Salarte. Staying in his strike zone. Getting the back to back change ups and staying off a pitcher's pitch. He works the walk. We mentioned earlier the average is just over one walk per game. Scherzer with his pinpoint control. He's walked two here in the fourth inning. A Padre over every pillow. Venable, Kemp, Solarte loaded up for Will Middlebrooks who struck out the first time. And he pops it up. Right side. Espinoza on the edge of the grass. And so much for the fourth. The Padres leave the bases loaded.
people riding bicycles out here. And all of it is to raise awareness for Pedal for the Cause. Team up with Pedal the Cause and San Diego Padres to raise funds for life-saving cancer research at San Diego's world-class research centers. Event is September 18th through the 20th. Register today and ride with the Padres. Visit gopadres.org and use the promo code GOPADRES. And this is what we were talking about earlier. And these guys are out here until the seventh inning. I tell you, nothing's better than burning some calories while well, the lovely smell of some Hodad's burgers, right, Mark? <laughs> oh, yeah. Hodad's. They do yeah. a great job out there. That smell is delicious. Yeah, don't bring any up to us. No, don't do no, that. No, don't do that. Escobar. You mean the bikes, right? The bikes, of course. Single, I RBI, and a double for Escobar. Many of those uh, that are riding the stationary bikes are cancer survivors and we applaud uh, the courage that goes with very harsh treatment yeah, we do battle for life line drive right to Middlebrooks oh, yeah, Escobar putting the ball hard today a single double and a lineup play some of the challenges for Andrew Kashner moving forward he has 86 pitches as we take a look at this line drive to Will Middlebrooks but moving forward as a starting pitcher what do you want to what do you want to try to do well, look, what he's got to do right now, first and foremost, is start getting ahead of these guys. Uh, you know, he may not be on time as his fastball today, but I know Buddy Black's going to need him to go in the fifth. So this is one of those situations where he's going to want to go to continue to go out there, throw first pitch strikes, try to get them to get themselves out and move forward. So the goal here is at least to get Kastner to eat up six innings. Harper with a big swing and a miss. You think about that short start for Adrisa Amir Despagne yesterday, going only three innings. That will put the pressure on the starting pitching. Moving forward. So Dresemir Despagne. Harper. Bunts his way on. Oh, he can do it all. So in this series, he's now been on base. Ten times. Now with 13 home runs, you're not expecting laying down a bunt. That's the reason why you shift and you play Will Milbrooks back, but this is a perfect situation to combat that shift. Yeah, 22. He's a pretty heady ball player, isn't he? He, he is. knows what he's doing. Learn the game at a fast pace. Not just a, all of his tremendous physical talent. So one out and Harper aboard again for Zimmerman, who has grounded out and grounded into a key double play that took the uh, Nationals out of a potential big inning. Spansenberg making the diving stop at second to start that twin killing. So just going back on Harper and his contribution in the middle of that lineup. He was up five times on Thursday night. He was 0 for 2 but he walked three times. Then last night he had a single a home run had two singles and a home run went three for four knocked in two and tonight on base three straight times a single a walk and a bunt single ground ball to third could be two there's one relay Spangenberg a double play around the horn it goes five four three the second double play turned by the Padres tonight both against Ryan Zimmerman now the Padres come up home half of the fifth need four to tie.
Eisner, he needed only nine pitches to get through the fifth. That double play helping out, of course. So that means uh, he should have enough fuel left in that right arm to go another inning. Amarista, first ball hunting and sends a high fly ball to Taylor in left field. Austin Hedges also drove Taylor back toward the wall. One step from the wall in his first at bat. One of the troubling factors for the San Diego Padres is that production at the back end of the order. I know you always think about Matt Kemp and Justin up in the middle of the order because these guys have a track record. But up and down the order you have to grind out at bats and trust your process so much. They have to put their piece in too and that's the reason why you're going to sustain some of these. These bigger innings. And capitalize on that. Oh and two. Slider. There's Mark Kotze and first year as the hitting coach. Got him. Three pitch strikeout is seventh Scherzer. That'll bring up Kashner with two out although. Yeah he's going to step to the plate as we uh, update the DraftKings players to watch that uh, they told you about in the pregame show. Uh, nothing jumps out there. Uh, Venable 0 for 1. Grinke's allowed three hits and a run just for him to allow a run in three innings or something. Cano has been offered. And Felix Hernandez has allowed a couple of earned runs. King Felix, you would think he could throw a no hitter every time out, the type of stuff he has. Giving up four hits and two earned runs to Boston. Kashner grounded the short his first at bat. Now for those Padre fans out there wondering why Kashner's hitting in this situation down four nothing in the fifth. Well, we touched on it earlier. Adrisa Mayor Despagne only going three innings last night. That'll put pressure on him. He struck out Hedges on three pitches and Kashner on three. And a total of eight for Scherzer controlling the game tonight. Baseball brought to you by Saquon Casino. Only 30 minutes from Petco Park. By Jack in the Box. Head to Jack in the Box for Jack's Blazing Chicken Sandwich. And by Kaiser Permanente. Thrive. Beautiful Petco Park on this Saturday night with a big crowd. But it's been all Washington so far behind Max Scherzer's one hit shutout pitching. As we go to the sixth inning, Andrew Kashner will face Ramos, Espinosa, and Taylor. Wilson Ramos, an RBI single in the first inning, and a ground out to second the last time. These are just joining us. The Nationals got three runs right off the bat, first inning on four hits. Whew. And the 3 nothing lead bolstered to 4 nothing without the aid of a hit in the fourth inning. There's Ramos with his 17 game hitting streak. Well, how about D. Gordon? Oh, 
He's been a tremendous find for Miami. Wow. I couldn't believe that the Dodgers gave him up in the first place. Of course, to get Jimmy Rollins, I understand. But. Well, Jimmy Rollins and also Howie Kendrick, which I think that was the formula defensively because that's the deficiency if you look at D. Gordon moving over to second base. But he's played tremendous defense and also hitting 425. Yeah. I mean, he's like 40 points ahead of Gonzalez. And he's a game changer on the base pass. He has intent to steal bags, not only second base, but third base. But he, along with Giancarlo Stanton, are putting on a show in Miami. Gordon was hitting 433 coming into the game tonight. And that's significant historically. That change up is low. I want to give you that information because when you hit over 425 into the first quarter of the season, swing and a miss. Good fastball there from Kastner. It's only been done 12 other times, and all 12 won the batting title. So Gordon is really off to something special. It's time now, speaking of something special, for our Geico on this day in Padres history, May 16th. 1982 Gary Templeton hit a three run homer off Jeff Reardon in the top of the ninth inning and the Padres beat the Expos eight to two. And Jeff Reardon that closer that had unbelievable stuff. I saw Tempe at the yard a couple home stands ago. Always the good good to see him out here and around the ballpark. Strike out of Ramos was the fifth for Kashner. Scherzer has eight. Espinosa fly to center. He walked leading off the fourth inning, and that was the inning he scored without the aid of a hit. He drives this one to left center field. That's a long run for Venable, and he can't get there. Up against the boards on one hop, and Espinosa has his first hit. Another double for the Nationals. That's their ninth hit of the game. You take a look at the swing, and you hear the sound, and this has a lot of carry to that left center. He squares it up and Will Venable plays it off the wall. But I wanted to ask Clay Hensley, and, and speaking of Andrew Kashner, settling into games, and you wonder the ERA is there, but also the record is not. Does that affect the mindset from a, from a pitcher standpoint? Well, you don't want to think about the record too much. I mean, if you're going out there and you're throwing strikes and you're giving your, your, your ball club a chance to win, that's all you can do as a pitcher. You don't really want to get too concerned with the record because there's so many things that can happen behind you that you can't control. That was the 100th pitch from Andrew Kastner. As Taylor swings and misses, he has a single and a strikeout. Taylor. To Middlebrooks. And he just does get him, and then advancing to third on the play is Espinoza. Good play at both ends. Middlebrooks and a scoop by Solardi at first base. Well, that hard hop is the long hop for Solarte. You see the throw by Middlebrooks. It's the long hop that gives you difficulty. The short ones you can get down and really short hop it, and it's an easier pick. Nice Another pick part by of Solarte. That, well, you played there at the bag. The other is that long hop comes off the grass and yeah. you can skid on you. Yeah, it's that edge that you, you do and the difference between the grass. Pop and also the dirt. The dirt will tend to lift up a little bit. Scherzer takes a strike. He's tried to bunt both times, struck out trying to sacrifice in the second, and he did sacrifice successfully in the fourth when Kastner threw the, his bunt into center field. One and one. Kevin Quackenbush warming in the Padres bullpen. This likely the last inning for Kastner, who's over the century mark in tosses 104 coming up. That's in there. Kastner has not allowed this many hits in a start all season nine. You have to go back to last September when the Dodgers uh, 10 hits off Kastner the most he's ever allowed as a starter. 96 just miss two and two. Well, I think you go back with Andrew Kashner in managing his pitch count. 
as we see 105 now 101 last start and 93 the previous start before that. But you have to be aware of those things and how far you can go with Andrew Cashman. Trying to pitch out of the man at third two outs here that keeps the Padres in grand slam range that from a Washington perspective is a big fifth run over there at third. Missed again outside three and two. A lot of foul balls tonight, a lot of three ball counts. And now against the pitcher, he's gone full with leadoff man Span on deck. That got the outside corner, strike three. Sixth strikeout for Kastner, probably his final pitch tonight. Nothing here at Petco Park, and here is Spangenberg. This is significant because this home run to the opposite field on Thursday night is the last time the Padres scored. They've gone 18 straight scoreless innings since. So maybe the young infielder can tag one here, get the Padres off the Schneid. He has struck out and bounced to second against Scherzer. Allowing only one hit tonight, a couple of walks, and they all came in the fourth inning. But the Padres, with two outs, couldn't do anything with, with that bases loaded opportunity. Middlebrook uh, popped up in that inning. Meanwhile, Scherzer mowing him down with the strikeout pitch has eight in five innings. Spangenberg, Venable, and Kemp off the top of the batting order for the Padres here in the home half of the sixth inning. Slider for a strike. And he's ahead 0 and 2. A couple of sliders. It's a veteran pitcher for you. They started the game. Nothing but fastballs to Spangenberg, striking him out in the first inning. Now two consecutive sliders to Begin this uh, confrontation. Yeah, and he's backed off those sliders too, almost a slur. You see the change up followed up with those two two sliders, but those sliders for the purpose of throwing strikes. Think about how many weapons Max Scherzer has to attack hitters, different styles, and he has a purpose. 
fly ball slicing toward that souvenir section, and that will become a take home treat. Nice grab by the fan. Old school jacket, that's sweet. Yeah, they got the glove going. Those three blokes are going to have a good time after the game. Yes. I just have a feeling, don't you? That's a good bet. <laughs> Strike three called. So he sets him up with the slider and the changeup and then mows him down with the fastball. Nine strikeouts. That's one below his high. He's struck out 10 in two games this year. Last time here with the Detroit Tigers, Scherzer pitch. Venable tagged him for a double into the right field corner. See that elevated fastball, which I think is really important, and he hasn't elevated too many times, not on purpose tonight. Padres beat Scherzer on that Sunday afternoon, five to one. Venable has struck out and walked tonight. You could uh, compare Scherzer coming to Washington as the James Shields coming to the Padres. Exactly. You, know, you get an ace, a top of the rotation pitcher to add to what both expect to be very good starting staff through this year. Line drive, left center field. That could go all the way to the wall and well. Venable to second base. No chance for a three, and it's a bad risk anyway, trailing 4 nothing. But Venable, a sharp double to left center field. Well, this is just a tailor-made perfect swing by Will Venable. The fastball that's elevated and it flattens out. This is nice hitting going the other way. What a sound. Loud off that bat. Hang the laundry on that line drive. Padres with a chance to score now in the bottom of the sixth inning. Matt Kemp, a hard ground out to short and a line single over short. <laughs> Left center field, shallow, long run for Span, and he runs it down. The speed of the center fielder took that possible boop single away from Kemp. Well, speaking of the starting staff for Matt Williams, here they are. Figuring Scherzer at the top of the list. We saw Jordan Zimmerman. He handcuffed the Padres last night, a shutout win. Strasburg pitches tomorrow. Gio Gonzalez, the left-hander, he's three and two this year. And Doug Fister goes on the disabled list after pitching the Thursday night game. Just talking about the depth, Tanner Roark, who is in the bullpen for the Nationals, won 15 games last year. He's not in that starting five. How about that? He probably will be the man that takes uh, Fister's spot in the rotation. Strasburg. He's had an off season so far. He's two and four. He'll oppose Ian Kennedy tomorrow. 1-10 game time. 12-30 here on Fox Sports San Diego. In the dirt and on to third goes Venable. Wild pitch. Well, the Padres 90 feet away from breaking the shutout bid. Well, we saw an elevated fastball and now this glove side slider that gets away and Ramos does not move his feet to block that pitch. Tough to backhand those, isn't it? It is, and it's the breaking ball, but the command has been so good and Bobby Ramos stuck himself into a position where he thought that pitch was going to be on the outside corner. Not many bad pitches from Max Scherzer tonight. One and one. High fly ball slicing into the right field corner. That's pretty deep. Harper into the corner and he makes the catch in foul territory. Now the Padres leave Venable at third and after six they are still hungry for a run.
Montgomery first inning Escobar with a base hit to right field and that drove in the first run of the game throw got away on Kemp's error and the play continued. Infield ground out scores another run off the bat of Zimmerman and a third run on Ramos' single that extended his hitting streak to 18 consecutive games. And a sacrifice fly by Denard Spann without the aid of a hit. The Nationals scored another run in the fourth inning, and that's where we stand 4 0. The Padres with only two hits off Max Scherzer. And the, the bad luck again for. Kastner and it is the fact not to make any excuse he just doesn't get any run support that's the last five starts the Padres have scored while he was on the mound a total of two runs well that five starts. it did it happened last year too and at times you would think Andrew Kastner would be battle tested but that has to be so hard to go out there and, and know you're not getting that run support but also coming into this knowing you're opposing Max Scherzer you have to have that in your mind of putting up zeros and unfortunately Brandy Cashner, that first inning did him. Pitching change brought to you by El Cajon Ford as Kevin Quackenbush is in. Face the top of the order, Span, Desmond, and Escobar. Anyone gets on, Bryce Harper. So Cashner goes six innings, allows four runs, all earned, nine hits, two walks, six strikeouts. Chop by the mound, Spansenberg there to backhand and throw him out. Brings up Ian Desmond, who's hit the ball hard again tonight. A double. Ian three trips. Washington pitching after that opening night, Thursday night, when Doug Fister obviously had arm trouble. Padres jumped on him for seven runs the first two innings and since then frighteningly quiet for the home side. Yeah, Doug Fister pitching that rain delay game and also went on the disabled list the following day. Line drive watch out that almost took the ball cap right off Quackenbush's head he had to spin out of the ways self defense. The tenth Washington hit of the night. Well, hitting 231 coming into this game, and you know he's at the top of the order. In the second spot, he's going to get more fastballs. And he's capitalizing on that tonight. So the two, three, and four hitters in the lineup for Washington, all with a pair of hits. Escobar, an RBI single to right, later scored himself in the first inning and doubled in the third inning and lined out to third base. The last time. You think things are going well? A selfie from this day and age on the on deck circle. <laughs> there was a day where you never would have done that. Can you imagine that? Dick Williams allowing that or you know the Rocher. It's, it's funny immediately I think of Tony La Russa, my manager yeah. in St. Louis. If I ever <laughs> thought about that. I think it would have been an easy option. <laughs> you want to take a picture, Swinney? <laughs> Why don't you go in the locker room and take all you want? There's a throw to second, and they nail the runner. Desmond, there's Hedges, quick feet and strong arm at work again. His second throw out tonight. Now look like Ian Desmond tried to catch the Padres napping with that delay. Let's see how he handles it to two shuffles, and then he takes off. But Austin Hedges aware of that, and also. Alexi Amarista covering the bag. See the two shuffles and then taking off. You got to always have your concentration up and Austin Hedges with a fine play. So two outs. One and one. And that one sailing toward the crowd down the right field line out of play. Now Dick with a 4-0 lead, 4-0 lead, you can take those chances. Try to get in the scoring position, especially with the one out. And then Austin Hedges knows how important that is. Always aware of that running game if you're a catcher. Yeah, Derek Norris leading the National League and throwing out runners. And Hedges is doing his part tonight with a couple runners nailed. So 
You know, I like that from Kevin Quackenbush, making it uncomfortable and pitching inside. If you look at Andrew Kastner tonight, he had the fastball, he had the two seamer as we take a look at Derek Norris. But in my estimation, making hitters uncomfortable and pitching inside a little bit more. Fly ball shallow right. Kemp squeezes the out of good inning for Quackenbush. Stretch half of the seventh at Petco. Four nothing, Washington. you by Mercury Insurance. Log on to mercuryinsurance.com and see how much you could save. By Petco. What we feed them matters. And by your San Diego Lexus dealer. Over the bridge on Harbor Boulevard. And back into Petco Park. John Solarte leads off in the seventh. Padres down four nothing. Solarte a walk on the ground out tonight. Change up. A one two. Well, Max Scherzer in his seven starts this year. His max pitch limit it was 114. Last time out only 94 pitches. So you wonder with Matt Williams how he is going to manage this game and how far he will let him. Ball hit well to right center and there's no one there. That ball is up against the Lucas Oil sign. And Solarte will pull up at second base with a long double. He continues to be an outstanding hitting threat from that left side. Well, he has earned every bit of playing time, and you watch this style of hitting, the mistake over the middle of the plate. And this is an absolute bullet into the gap. Hits to the base of the wall, and how about the sound? Well, the second double of the night for the Padres. Venable doubled in the last inning, but high to third. Padres couldn't bring him in. A chance now to break through against Scherzer. Here's Middlebrooks. He's been up twice, struck out, and popped up with the bases loaded, and two outs in the fourth inning. And the Padres' best opportunity. Throwing in the bullpen for Washington. Mm, kind of came down more sidearm there, didn't he? Yeah, he has that low, low three quarter delivery. That ball just jumps out of his hands. That finish in the strike zone. Heard right. Bud, Bud Black talk about that last night with Jordan Zimmerman. Well, tonight you're seeing the similar look to a pitch, but you're seeing that different arm angle, the three quarter delivery. Oh, and two now to Middlebrooks. Brandon Maurer getting loose for the Padres. Good stop by Ramos on a slider in the dirt. The way 
Sanchez has been pitching. Padres wouldn't mind getting into that Nationals bullpen. Uh, twin support here for the Padres. Well, if there's a weakness of the Washington Nationals, it is the bullpen. High fly ball, right center. Not deep enough for Salarte to tag in advance. And one away. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the San Diego Padres and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. Always great to reflect upon that number and what he meant to baseball in this great city. We miss you, Tony. Well, Always talked about. What a player, but what a man. Amarista struck out and fly to left. Red Black on the phone, checking on the bullpen. Mauer is ready if needed. Amarista trying to get over that Mendoza line. Yeah, this at bat over two, hitting 187. Around fastball 95. We saw a lot from Alexi Amarisa at the end of the year playing a solid shortstop, earning his opportunity this year to play every day. But you think about the rigors and how mentally tough you have to be to gain that respect and be that everyday player. I still believe he can do that, but the numbers don't indicate it the way he's played at the beginning of the year this year. One ball and two strikes. Little ninja. There's Derek Norris on deck. Hedge is due to hit. Next. Too. Amarista has walked more than any Padre 14 times, but his RBI total of only seven is by far the lowest of any National League shortstop. But here's a chance to pick up Solardi out at second base. And a lot of the good swings from Alexi Amarista have been that left center gap area. The line drives to that left center area. Very shallow a span in left center. Ground ball left side, and that shoots through. Salarte has to hustle to third, and the Padres have runners at the corners with one out, and a chance again to get into that four nothing Scherzer lead. And how about the little ninja going the other way with two strikes? And this is a nice approach. The elevated fastball. See his eyes right down on the barrel of the bat, hitting that 5.5 hole. How funny we watch, see the number 19 and. We hit the 5.5 hole. Yeah, that happened twice this series. Good omen. So here's Derek Norris, who has been a doubles machine all season long. And here in the seventh, a chance. Padres first and third. Only one out. At 302 average, the best of any current Padre. Alonso's on the DL at 333, but Norris is. Uh, of the active players, the best batting average. And oh, nice swing. Thursday night, five RBIs with a three run homer and a two run triple. Well, if you're pinch hitting, you get that heat. It's on the plate. You've got to take a hack at it. Eric Norris was ready. You could see the intent and pulling his hands in. That was just a good pitcher's pitch. He's been a money hitter with men in scoring position. Monte now in the on deck circle. Pitcher spot due next. Slider, perfect position for the pitcher. 
right on the knees outside corner. So two strikes to Norris. Able to jump off the bench and go deep for career pinch home runs. But in the hole, 0 and 2. Ten seconds he poses out there from the stretch. And he's so deliberate. You think about the hitters that have to stay in the batter's box, and you wonder if this is going to change too. How long the pitchers have to deliver a pitch, even in the stretch. Thousand four, thousand five, and he strikes him out. Fastball. No two away. That's number ten. That matches his season high for Scherzer. And today's game, folks, presented in HD by Sony 4K. Almonte. Switch hitting outfielder. He's had 15 at bats since being uh, recalled from El Paso with four hits, all singles. Two for 10 from the left side. Well, did have a single in his first at bat last night. Had a pinch hit in the first game of this series. The Padres have gotten the man to third base three times, including this inning. Bases were loaded in the fourth. But Middlebrooks popped out. Venable at third in the sixth inning, and Upton fouled out. Now first and third in the seventh. Interesting that this lob throw over to first base just to uh, almost buy time and slow the game down. Now, there's no intent to pick him off, but changing the pace of the game, maybe putting extra thoughts in the hitter's mind. Aaron Barrett, a right hander, and Matt Thornton, a lefty, getting ready in the Washington pen. That's in there. Fastball 0 and 2. Oh, he just. Hitter after hitter gets two strikes. Well, the strike thrower, but also velocity and secondary pitches, and he's putting on a clinic. He's reached the 101 pitch mark. Ooh, just a little low. Goodness. Well, it's time for the Cholula flamethrower, Mark. Well, let's take a look at it. 97 miles an hour, and because it's Max Scherzer, that's hot sauce. Now, if it was 97 and um, Padre pitcher, what would it do? Hot sauce. That's what we're talking about. One and two. Change up. See our Fox tracks by Nissan and that third pitch looked like it hit that bottom corner. Surprise break for the San Diego Padres and hopefully you can capitalize on that. So two balls two strikes to the pinch hitter El Monte if he is successful back to the top of the order in Spangenberg. Strikeout for Scherzer. Another man stranded at third.
Cameron's working on Padres Live, the post-game show, which will be brought to you tonight by Cox Communications. We knew going in it was going to be a tough road to hoe against a guy like Max Scherzer. What have you seen from him tonight? The bottom line with Max Scherzer tonight, he's just got ahead of our hitters, and he's put him away. He's making the hitters right now. You know what? Hit my fastball. Prove to me that you're going to hit my stuff. And he hasn't deviated from that game plan. And you can see what he's doing tonight. He's been doing it all year, and he carried it in here to San Diego. Now, Scherzer has certainly made quick work of some of the Padre hitters by not wasting that 0 2 pitch and going right at guys. And you kind of knew what you were in for tonight with Scherzer. He's been able to deliver to this point. Hopefully, the Padres will continue to nick away, maybe get into that bullpen. When we see uh, after the final out, in addition to having all the highlights from here and around baseball, we'll also have a preview of a spotlight show that will follow us immediately. And it focuses on Matt Kemp. We'll learn all about him, his upbringing, and his time away from the ballpark. It's really a can't miss show, and we'll preview it for you tonight after the final out. Now let's get you back up to Dick and more, guys. All right, Michael. Padres facing a veteran star pitcher tonight, and Scherzer with a season high 11 strikeouts, quite washing the Padres through seven, and Maurer trying to keep Washington in check. Padres within four with two innings to go. Bryce Harper leads it off, and he hits it high in the air off the left side. Middlebrooks trying to find it up in the night and makes the catch. Well, Harper out for the first time. Two singles and a walk previously. Well, taking a look at the work, the body of work for Brandon Maurer, he is gaining confidence with every appearance. You see the numbers from both the left side and the right side. He has been dominating in that slider and also the fastball velocity has been very impressive. Norris stays in the game, replacing Hedges, the man for whom he pinch hit. Zimmerman sharply struck. Spangenberg corrals it. Two away. That'll bring up Wilson Ramos. Well, the attendance tonight 45,282. That's close to a record at Petco Park. The all time high 45, 567. So less than 300 from the all time attendance high for Petco. Fortunately, this big crowd hasn't had much of a chance to to cheer the Padres. So Max, Max Scherzer throwing a blanket over the enthusiasm. You'll probably see someone in, from the bullpen in the bottom half of this eighth inning. Ramos singled in the first inning, knocked in a run, one for three. And that extended his longest. Uh, Ever hitting streak now to 18, and that's the longest in the big leagues right now. Here's that slider. Two and one. Gained so much confidence. He started the year in AAA as we take a look at Matt Thornton getting ready with Corey Spangenberg and Will Venable, the left handers, and Buddy Black's lineup due up. The top of the inning. Swing and a miss by Ramos. Excuse me, the bottom of the inning. He's already used two right handed batters. Uh, off the bench. Over but low on the slider. Just marvel at the arms coming out of the major league bullpens. 95, 96 almost seems like a norm for everybody, but also the high velocity sliders. 87 there, 89 on the last one. Two out walk to Ramos. Brings up Espinosa, who has a walk and a double score to run tonight. And our closed captioning, as always, brought to you by Wiener Schnitzel. Shift on for Espinosa with Amarista just barely on the shortstop side of the bag. See Amarista there behind there and all on the right side. Pops him up. Middle of the diamond. Norris with a catch. 
And the Padres come up in the eighth inning. Top of the order to face left-hander Matt Thornton. Guaranteed of the opportunity to purchase tickets to the 2016 All-Star Game at Petco Park. Become a Padres season ticket member at the gold or platinum level today and lock in your chance to get tickets to this highly anticipated game. Visit Padres.com slash membership or call 619-795-5555. Thank you, Mark Sweeney. As Matt Thornton, a veteran left-hander, enters the game. A couple of years in Seattle. Eight. Seasons with the White Sox and split uh, some time with Boston, the Yankees recently, and uh, pitched in 18 games last year when Washington acquired him. 15th appearance of the year. One of those lefties that every major league bullpen wants. You pitch to maybe only one or two lefties in a game, but get them out and cheers her. A job well done. No surprise there. 2 and 0 to Spangenberg, who has struck out twice and grounded out. One of the three lefties that Matt Williams has in his bullpen. Very proud of that fastball and gets up to 95 miles an hour, but you can see command comes into play. Fastball change up and a slider to go along with it. 3 and 0. Padres need base runners. That's strike one. Padres have. You have to assume that Myers is unable to pinch hit. So the Padres have two men available, Barmas and Jerko, to hit from the right side. And the count now full to Spangenberg. And should but let go to a right handed batter. Matt Williams has the right hander Aaron Barrett ready. Hit deep to left field, slicing into the corner and foul. Got a lot of wood on that one, did Spangenberg, who's home run to left field back in the fourth inning on Thursday night, the last run the Padres scored. This is one of those situations where a walk is as good as a hit. Another foul, almost the same spot. So from three and zero, oh, Thornton four consecutive strikes. Three of them fouled off by Spangenberg. Ball four. There it is. The leadoff walk. Hey, Padre fans, join the Padres and the baseball tomorrow. Fun to help 
youth baseball and softball programs. Tomorrow, bring new and used equipment to Petco Park to donate. Bins will be located outside of the gates. And I love that. Why not? Spur on those baseball and softball programs. A lot of great looking kids here tonight in the sellout crowd. Venable doubled his last time. He's also walked tonight. Take strike one. Struck out his first time against Scherzer, then a walk and a double. Big hole on the right side. Slider outside. You see Thornton then coming in. He's probably only facing these two hitters with Matt Kemp on the on deck circle. Ground ball to the third baseman. Good play by Escobar, and they turn two. Around the horn, 5 4 3, and there goes that leadoff walk. Hit hard by Venable, but Escobar turns it quickly. Well, other major league action, and here's some headline stories. Miguel Cabrera, the Tigers, his 400th career home run today. 53rd player ever to reach that 400 mark. John Carlos Stanton doesn't he hit a home run every night and they're big ones 478 feet but the Miami Marlins lost to the Braves and Brandon Crawford a grand slam as the Giants won handily at Cincinnati. And I saw a video of the Giancarlo Stanton home run today and you'd be amazed at the fan that caught that baseball. I don't think the, the cameraman got deked on it. It was an absolute bomb. Well the fan was in Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> That was another long home run. It went into the TV well last night, and this one was even longer yeah, than that. This one flew by it, waved on the way by. Matt Kemp. He has grounded sharply to short, singled over the shortstop's head, and fly to center field. Padres with four hits tonight off Scherzer. In the dirt, one and one. Dick, so many people talk about Matt Kemp and coming into this at bat only one home run. Well, yeah. a lot of that has to do with the timing. You sit here and watch his work in the batting practice, the ball flies off his bat. Not a very good swing there. But the difficulty of an at bat in timing that comes into it, you just feel in parts. The upper upper half is not sinking with the lower half, and that has a lot to do with the power. Obviously, the foul balls come into play. But when you're locked in, everything's working together. Soft fly ball to right. It's a long run for Harper. He gets there. Just in time to make the catch, and the Padres are out in the eighth. Four nothing, Nationals.
rules of the trade. Oh, look at Austin Hedges in the catch and throw, and you see that dart that he throws down to third base. Good footwork and the nice throw. Good tag by Will Middlebrooks, but earning his keep and being aware of the delay steal. It's just an absolute gun, and he has shown very well behind the plate. He's trying to find your worth at the big league level, but a young star in the making, in my estimation. Well, as we suspected, scoring first was going to be important, and Washington did just that with three in the first inning, added one without a hit in the fourth, and that's where we stand in the ninth. And Craig Kimbrell, the closer, comes in to work the ninth. He hasn't been on the mound since Wednesday, and Bud Black wants to give him some work. I think if you look at it, you look at that 10 for 11 save opportunities. I disregard the ERA. Obviously, you want a lower ERA as a closer, but this is a wipeout strikeout guy that can dominate the ninth inning and just getting the body of work is very difficult mentally for these closers they're so used to and accustomed to that tough situation Michael Taylor the rookie outfielder one for three leads it off from the top of the night first pitch at 97 almost consistent all season long that first pitch at 97 miles an hour. Yeah, and I think mechanically he has missed on his arm side a lot lately. And that coupled with that curveball that he spikes, but it's an uncomfortable at bat whether you're right handed or left handed. There's the breaking ball one and one. Yeah, that missed leading statistic the ERA as a relief pitcher. In a couple of uh, non save situations, he gave up a couple of runs, and that just jumps the earned run average out of proportion. And this is a guy that's not going to make any excuses. And you think about a dominating closer in the game with that ERA, he is still considered the best closer in the game. Tyler Moore out of the Washington dugout with a bat, so he's going to pinch hit for Thornton. 98. Two and one. Forty five thousand two eighty two on baseball night in San Diego. Ooh, that fastball through the swing of the rookie. Hope you'll be out here tomorrow. Always a great day. The Sunday saluting the military and tomorrow the U.S. Coast Guard. 110 our game time. We'll be on the air at 1230 with Padres Live, the pregame show. Ian Kennedy against former San Diego State star Steven Strasburg. Oh, Dick, look, how about this look? How he hides the baseball. Oh, 98. Blows down Taylor. One away. Go to your seat. The reason why you hide the baseball. Short quick arm velocity, but not picking up that release point until it gets right there. So that velocity actually probably looks to the hitter like it's plus 100 miles an hour. So some awkward swings, cheating to get to that fastball, and then he exposes yourself to the breaking ball. Tyler Moore has made a pinch hit appearance in all three games. And there is that breaking ball. Obviously that camera is to the side. But just the hiding of the baseball, the breaking ball. You start shaking your head thinking, how am I going to hit this? Another breaking ball and it's one and one. Through the netting behind home plate. <laughs> Unfair. You know, I think a lot of people don't get the opportunity to come and watch the talent this close, and we're giving it to you. But I marvel at the speed of the pitches, but also the secondary stuff to go along with that. So sharp. In the minor leagues, you'll get velocity, 
but you won't get the consistency factor that you get at this level. Three straight sliders. Will they give him a fourth, or is this the blowout fastball? Oh, fastball at 98. Hey, that sounded like a strike, says Tyler Moore. Two strikeouts for Kimber. Well, again, reaching back and after those three sliders that you talked about, Dick. Reaching back with that proud fastball and getting behind that. Right across that W on the left chest of Tyler Moore. Denard Span, the leadoff hitter, one for three, a single and a sacrifice fly tonight. It's been a series where the first inning has been everything. The Padres on Thursday night rattled the, the scoreboard with three and went on to an 8 3 win. Last night, Washington with four runs in the first inning on their way to the 10 0. Win and tonight three more in the first inning for Washington. They only one other run scored since as they lead four nothing. And we mentioned earlier that Washington, when they score first coming into the game, they're 11 and two. Well, Dick, moving forward for the Padres to sustain this, the success, it has to come with the consistency of the starting rotation. They are a very talented group. Well, that just hasn't been the same as last year. It hasn't, and, and from year to year, it's an adjustment, both mentally, what you're dealing with off the field, on the field. Two and one. But I think if you're going to go on a run, and this talented group can do that, and they will do it, you're going to have to do it with starting pitching, and also the offense has to chip in as well. James Shields, a 5 and 0, oh, one Padre pitcher with a good record, but he's gotten a lot of run support. Line drive left field and fair ball. Span on his way into second base as Upton plays it in and a double for Span. The 11th hit tonight for the Washington Nationals. So the top of the order, Span with two hits. Desmond two, Escobar two, Harper two. Desmond lined a double in the left field corner in the first inning, scored one of the three runs, and he singled the center the last time. There's your point. They got to be ready for the fastball when they don't get it. They look foolish. And that's cheating to get to that fastball because of velocity. And it will expose you to those awkward swings out of the strike zone. Well, there are not any easy outs in this Washington lineup, brother. Everybody's swinging the bat. You know, when you're hot, that's that's what you're going to get. This is a talented group. Another breaking ball. 0 and 2. Not close on either one. Why not throw him another one? Huh? Yeah, hiding the baseball, not picking up the release point, and the execution of a pitch down and away. You can see where the power from Kimbrell comes at 5'11. Look at those thighs. He's got strong lower body. Chop to third. Middlebrook's throw across in time. And the Nationals gone in the ninth. It'll be Upton, Solardi, and Middlebrooks for the Padres.
Engenberg at second base. A key stab, and he turns that into a 4-6-3 double play in support of Andrew Kastner. That saved a possible big inning. At Washington, minute first and second, no one out. Brian Zimmerman thought he had a base hit to center field. Our Bill Howe play of the game. Tomorrow, tune in at 1230 here, Fox Sports San Diego for Padres Live, the pregame show. Ian Kennedy will duel the right-hander Steven Strasburg, who is two and four. And at this point, it'll be a key game for the Padres to try to split the four-game series, although they still have three outs remaining. Inconsistent this year, Strasburg. We'll see what kind of stuff he brings to the ballpark tomorrow. And the same for Kennedy. As Justin Upton will lead it off against the new reliever, Aaron Barrett. The Bear, they call him. From the University of Mississippi. Yeah, more stuff than command. Almost 50-50 to right-handed hitters, both fastball and slider. Upton has struck out twice and fouled the right. One and one. 94 in that fastball. Barrett is 27. 6 3, 226, stocky guy. Get out the rally hats. Why not? Padres have had the bases loaded, couldn't score, and two other times had a man at third and couldn't bring him in against starter Max Scherzer, who had the Right stuff at the right time. Slam the door on any possible scoring bid with a 4 nothing lead. Three and one. And this is exactly what you want from the Padres perspective. Come back win. That possibility of rallying as the Padre fans look to look on. Lifted foul down the right field side, and Zimmerman can't get that far in. It's back three rows. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. John Solarde. Double the last time up is on deck. And the leadoff walk. Padres couldn't take advantage in the last inning when Thornton walked Spangenberg as Venable wrapped into a double play. Let's see if that's going to get the Padres kick started in the ninth. They're overdue. 21 straight innings without a run. Steve McCaddy, the pitching coach for the Washington Nationals, getting on the horn to probably get Drew Storen, the closer. Loose, but that could drive a manager crazy with a leadoff walk with a four run lead. Salarte, a ground out, a walk, and a double to right center. Strike one. And it's at least a modest accomplishment to get that closer to throw some pitches in that bullpen. That's exactly right. Change up. Breaking ball. And a hard slider off the fastball. Does serve as almost a change up, doesn't it? Yeah, tough as a scenario here because you get in there and you watch the first hitter. You almost want to take a strike in this situation. And you fall, you sit, find yourself behind in the count. Right center field again, but Span is able to cover the ground and make the catch. One away. Up and back to first. Will Middlebrooks comes to the plate. He's over three tonight. He was up with the best opportunity for San Diego to get to starter Max Scherzer. Back in the fourth inning with one out Venable walk. Kemp singled. Upton struck out, but then Solardi walked to load the bases. But Scherzer induced Middlebrooks to pop up to end the inning.
Slider outside. One ball and one strike. Barrett came up to the Nationals last year at rookie season, pitched 50 games, won three without a loss, a 2.66 ERA, so he won himself a spot. And the ninth pick out of the 2010 draft of the Washington Nationals. Over but low. With the Rebels at Ole Miss, pretty good pitching staff with Drew Pomerantz, no relation to Mike. No. So two men off that Ole Miss staff making the big leagues. Low and away. Fox tracks by Nissan had that fourth pitch off the plate. Oh, he called it a strike, didn't he? So it's two and two. Just stays alive a high fastball. No, no slider well. again. Another slider. One out here in the bottom of the ninth. The bats have been quiet since the fourth inning on Thursday. Shut out last night, ten nothing. Down four nothing tonight. Something needs to break loose here. Oh, that one almost hit him. Swing almost prevented the ball from striking Middlebrooks. It was almost a protective swing. Ball kept on running inside on him. Padres down to their final out. Scherzer struck out 11. And now Barrett with his first. Amarista struck out, flight out, and singled the last time up. Singled with one out, and uh, Solardi had doubled, was at second base, couldn't score on the play, so first and third with only one out. But Scherzer took care of two pinch hitters, Norris and Almonte, striking both out. Goes defensive indifference, no steal, and two and zero. Oh. Padres need to get the man in the hole up to the plate here in the ninth inning. That would mean he'd represent the tying run. Derek Norris is on deck, and Kimbrel is the number nine hitter. But Black has uh, Chad Jerko available. And Clint Burmis. And Jerko looks as if he's the man should he get an opportunity. Two and one. Yeah, that's almost an automatic take if you're the hitter. You've got to put yourself in an unselfish situation. If you need base runners. Line drive, base set to left field. That'll bring Upton around to score, and it's four to one. So the leadoff walk pays off, and Amarista, the first Padre with more than one hit tonight. Dick, you never know in this game, and you got to keep on grinding, keep on battling, and this fastball down 
said earlier, Alexi Amarista going the other way. That tailor made swing and the adjustments he's made. That's a nice approach, as you can see, going the other way for the RBI. And Matt Williams not taking any chances. He's going to go to his uh, closer in the bullpen of right now. Drew Storen. He's been getting uh, loose out there and with a run home and the score four to one. And should Norris successfully reach that would bring the tie run to the plate. Ninth inning, run home as Upton scores on the single by Amarista. And here's Drew Storen, who's off and on with Washington. Ben, their closer, then their setup man. Back to closer. Ten, now 11 saves and 14 chances. 27 year old. Had 43 saves back in 2011. Norris, the hitter. Ball one. And you see that average 043 against right handed hitters because of the fastball slider combination, almost 50 50. They ride that fastball up in the strike zone and have sink on it when it's down. Jerko on deck, hoping to get a chance. Oh, good breaking ball, that slider. A lot of action on it. If he comes up, he'd be representing the tying run. Another slider. Two and one. It was the first round pick of the National Storm. Tenth overall back in 2009. Out of Brownsburg, Indiana. Mm, good cut. And it's two and two. Again, did that count? One one got to two one. You get a fastball. You buy yourself a better pitch to hit, and he got one right there. Just fouled it off. Amory stood first with his RBI single. Two out, two and two now to Derek Norris. Just stays alive. The cup on the end of Derek Norris's back. You get out front of that slider. Sometimes you break and chip off a part of that back. But you want to check it. Question is, is that cup half full or half empty here tonight? It's half full. All right. Another slider coming up. 
Got him. And the ball game is over. Uh, Washington Nationals 10 nothing last night 4 to 1 the final this evening. Here's Mike Pomerantz. Guys coming up on the post game show you knew going in this was going to be a pitcher's duel Andrew Kastner against Max Scherzer. We're going to show you what the difference was though for Scherzer in this one and you're going to hear from Buddy Black in moments.